Hey guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Derek. I'm definitely glad you're here because today I'm going to talk about quite possibly what might be my game of the year, even though I'm a little biased when it comes to the series. I still think this is a great game. Now, we've got a taste of Halo Infinite a couple of years ago, actually. We got to see some first-time gameplay, and a lot of people was underwhelmed by it. Said the graphics were bad, which, in my opinion, I thought they were fine. But, yeah, I mean, it did look like it was being catered to the Xbox One, but just so it could run it great, which I haven't played it on the Xbox One. I've played it on PC and Xbox Series X, which I'll let you know, runs like a dream. Runs better than I probably any games came out this year, honestly. We've seen a bunch of games, high-profile games coming out. Battlefield, Call of Duty. Uh, what else was bad? There's a lot of shit. I'm sure of it. I'm sure of it. Battlefield and Call of Duty is the big ones. What Call of Duty was fine. It plays like Call of Duty. But Battlefield, um, whew. we'll talk about that in another video. But I was so excited. They released Halo multiplayer a month early in November. And a lot of people wasn't expecting it. It just came out and it worked. Though there were some problems with progression and that's, that was a big problem, but it wasn't it didn't affect the game in terms of playability. The graphics were fine. Definitely update from the last time we've seen Halo. And it feels like the best Halo game in terms of playability that I have ever played. Now, I love the series. I started playing it back in the day. When I, first time I played Halo Combat Evolved, I went to a friend's house in high school. And he had an Xbox. I didn't have one. And was playing on the Duke controller. I was like, hey, I want to try that out. So I tried out Halo Combat Evolved. Absolutely loved it. And then I bought it on PC. I pirated it on PC because back in the day I was a pirate. So I'm not saying I don't do that now, but I don't. Buy your games illegally, guys. Just buy them. Support the studios. Unless they don't deserve it like Activision Blizzard. You fucking cunts. Whew. Man. Man. So Halo. Halo Infinite. I have played probably maybe uh, 10 hours of the multiplayer. I'm not the biggest multiplayer guy, but this took me back to the days when playing Halo 2 and Halo 3. Like, we would go to my friend's house, we'd take our TVs, our Xboxes, we'd be drinking Game Fuel and eating Little Caesars Hot and Ready's when they came out. And that might say how old I am. This is when Hot and Ready's was just becoming a thing. And we had the Halo uh, edition Mountain Dew, it was called Game Fuel. It was, it was pretty tasty, even though we'd drink and eat all this stuff and we wake up in the mornings feeling terrible but it was fucking worth it because it was halo we stayed all night at the uh game stops not all night we stayed till midnight for these opening launches and it was exciting you know all these people there i mean i there for a while i went to all the openings but halo was always the funnest now i won't personally stay up till midnight to do it again because I buy everything digitally for the most part, except for the things on Nintendo Switch and my older games library, which I'm not a big retro guy, but I do have some retro games. I guess they're now considered retro, which is weird. Uh, PlayStation 3, Wii, and you know GameCube, stuff like that. Thank God for the Xbox's backwards compatibility where I can play Time Splitters 2 and Future Perfect for the first time, which I played Time Splitters 2 back then. Was, we're not talking about that. But Halo, Halo Infinite. I just finished the campaign, and I did everything. Everything I can. There's a couple things I do not have done, but I completed all the FOBs, completed all the uh, territory. Uh, it's like big FOBs, like bases. You destroy those. I took out all the actual banished targets, and I got a majority, almost all of the cores and the, um, I guess it's customization boxes. But damn, like I've not had this fun with a video game for a long time. I didn't want to put it down. And I just went out of my way just to make the game longer. You know, I just did everything. Everything I could. I played it. I beat it on normal difficulty. And I actually had some problems. Like, you know, I don't play all my games on hardcore. I have beat every Halo game, at least on Heroic or Legendary. But this one, I started out normal. But I actually had some problems in terms of getting my ass killed. I've never died this much on a Halo game that's not multiplayer. This campaign, I actually died a lot. 
which might be saying I'm just being an old gamer and I don't know what the fuck I'm doing, but I actually had a challenge from normal, which is crazy to think. Um, and the weirdest thing, too, I didn't run to hardly any bugs. Nothing. The story beats were great. Was it the best Halo story? No. Was it a great Halo story? Yes. Steve Downs was amazing. It actually shown some more feeling and personality in this game than he has in the whole series, which is great. You actually feel for Master Chief this time. The other character, Echo, I'm not going to say his actual name because it's a spoiler, but Echo, um, I think that's what we're calling him. We're calling him the pilot or Echo. I forget the last digits, but Echo. Then we got the weapon, which is another AI that happens to look like Cortana. Again, we'll not spoil it because there's some revelations that happens and you're like, fuck yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Story beats were great. Um, the boss fights were, that was different. That was actually new to me. And it felt okay. They didn't feel like overpowered. They wasn't cheap. It was fun. Like the last boss was actually pretty fun too. And be sure if you haven't already, Make sure you stay after the in the credits for that special scene, which is great. Another thing I had, the equipment this time, which here's the thing. I used things like the thruster and the grappling hook, which the grappling hook is amazing. Let's just get, it changes Halo for the better. I mean, it's it's pretty damn pretty damn cool. It's kind of how Doom, how they approached it, but this is like in the single player, I didn't even use vehicles that much. I basically just use the grappling hook as much as I possibly can to swing in. One thing I want to do to make sure in with the customization options as well as the upgrades, make sure you go ahead and upgrade, fully upgrade your things like your shields and your grappling hook. Trust me, it's a good time, especially when you grab a hold of vehicles, grab a hold of canisters, grab a hold of the enemies, and just, it's fucking great. And I know I seem super excited about this, but I am. I'm really excited about this game, and I know it's over enthusiastic. Like, you're too happy talking about Halo. I know, I know. I'm really happy about talking about Halo. It's fucking great. Just say it, man. It's probably the biggest surprise of the year. You know, I didn't think it was going to be that good, which, you know, I liked Halo 4. I liked the story arc. I didn't really care for the multiplayer. Uh, 343 did a pretty good job with Halo 4. Halo 5 was a... Uh, Halo 5 was Halo 5. I guess the multiplayer was good. I didn't really get into the multiplayer like I have with Halo Infinite. Um, again, just the multiplayer by itself, it's free to play, which you don't have anything to lose. Again, the customization's getting better with the new e EXP grind. I mean, it's not too bad. It just falls in the shape of every other free-to-play game, but I see this game should have legs to stand on, considering the fact it's multi-platform with cross-play between PC and Xbox Xbox One, Xbox Series X players, which is pretty damn good. Um, you know, I don't feel like I'm having a bad time playing Halo multiplayer, even though I'm not that great at it. I'm not. I'm pretty shitty. You probably see some really shitty uh, plays I made on the last couple videos when we talked about Halo, but man, it's possibly my game of the year. Now I haven't finished games like Deathloop yet, which I'm working on Deathloop. I'm working on Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Pearl. And this game is probably one of my favorite games this year. And it's probably the best Halo experience since Halo 3. And I'm going to go ahead and stand on that one. I'm going to say it's probably one of the best Halo experiences you can have. And I see this being on a lot of people's game of the year list. Like, it just came out and, you know, it had troubled development. Of course it did. But it seems like with enough fire and enough um, work and that extra one year kind of helped it out a lot. Now, I don't know what the state of it would have been last year, whenever, if they would release it or two years ago. I don't know how that would have worked out, but with that extra time in the oven, they was able to improve nearly everything. Again, it's not perfect. It's not a perfect, it's not a 10 out of 10 game. Is it one of the best Halo games? One of the best first person shooters this year or maybe in a long time? Yeah. Yeah, it's up there with Doom Eternal for me. Like, Doom Eternal was great. I love Doom Eternal. Now I'm loving me some Halo Infinite. And I plan on playing more and more. Hopefully they release some expansion packs. Maybe for the story. Maybe we'll actually see some expansions. Because the game 
it should allow for it. Now, one of the things that really kind of bugged me a little bit, and I know a lot of people actually kind of talked about it, was the lack of diversity in terms of locations. Now, we know, like, in the Halo, previous Halo games, there's desert places, places full of snow, jungles, stuff like that. This is basically stuck on one part of the ring. Everything kind of looks the same. Uh, same thing can go into, like, the indoor, indoor interior stuff. Are they the best levels? No, no, not really. But it does so good with what it has that you kind of forget about it. And, you know, you you see some really nice vistas. Like, the, the graphics are great. I mean, it's not mind-blowing, but it's great. It's good to look at. It's pretty to look at. The art style is just fine. Uh, the AI is pretty good for the most part sometimes. Huh. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that, like, really bugged me is, like, I would be walking or galloping along, getting into fights, and for some odd reason, I just automatically die. I take one shot to the head out of nowhere, and this happened multiple occasions, so I'd just be strolling through an area, and all of a sudden, I just die, and you see that you got shot by a sniper out of... The enemies have some pretty good aim, for the most part. Now, some of the cool things you could do, too, is with the actual missions where you face off against banished... Uh, Big guys, what's the name of them? They're banished guys. Banished dudes. Big banished motherfuckers. That's what we're going to call them. We're, we'll call them that. We're calling them the big banished motherfuckers. That's what they are. They're 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 not too bad. The cool thing is you got actually unlock variants of some of the weapons in the game. More stronger variants and just unique stuff altogether. Um, and it's really cool that in the game itself you can unlock skins and stuff and customization options within multiplayer. So you're getting rewarded for playing through the single player campaign with multiplayer stuff. And it's definitely worth the ride. Like from the beginning to the end, you get to learn to love this game. It's it's simple. It's Halo. It reminds me if you took the whole level of silent cartographer from the original Halo and made one big giant island like massive, that's it. That's all you need to know. It feels like Halo, and it's got just enough of new stuff to make it still feel great. It doesn't overwhelm you. It's not a big shock, like going from one game to the other. It's it's great. It's a return to form, and I think 343, and this is me basically sucking uh, 343's dick at this point, but it's true. It's really great. I, I consider it probably one of my best games of the year that I have played. And again, that's probably me being biased because I love the Halo series, but I'm just saying, like, even if it didn't have the Halo name, it'd still be great. But just because it is Halo, and we're growing so much as a community, and for the last few years with games like Halo 4 and Halo 5, we've just needed that. We needed this game to kind of fill in the gaps to be a Halo game. And not trying to chase trends, which you could say it kind of chases trends with the free-to-play model. And the grappling hook, but the grappling hook is pretty damn cool. And it makes the game much better. Like, I couldn't imagine playing Halo Infinite without the grappling hook. It's just that good, guys. It just is. But guys, thank you so much for watching. I definitely appreciate it. If you like this review, feel free. Like I said, if you have Game Pass on the Xbox... Or PC, you can play it right on Game Pass. You don't have to go out, spend sixty dollars, which I did. I will, you know, support that game. So hopefully, we can see more and more as time goes. Hopefully, the multiplayer can become more robust and more features coming down the line. I know there's some lack of features within the multiplayer that a lot of people want, but that's coming. Three four three has said this is coming. Man, hopefully it does. Guys, thank you so much, and I'll talk to you soon.